Welcome to another baby theater. Today I'm here with Miles again. We're going to be learning about Sleeping Beauty. So, it was once a girl, Sleepy Booty. Actually, Aurora was her name. Uh, she definitely wasn't named Sleeping Beauty, so. Anyway, that whole title is kind of messed up. Cause like, no. So Aurora was pretty cool. What? Okay. So Aurora was pretty cool. She uh, she liked uh, she liked apples a lot. She'd make bad apple pies. She'd have like apple fritters. She'd just eat apples. She liked the Granny Smith. She liked the you know, all the different apples. The red apples. She liked those. She liked uh, lots of different apples, and and she ate them all the time. And that's one of the best things about her. That's like, you know, her hobby, eating apples. And she would actually go to these con contests, and she would win these huge awards. And it was kind of her, her living, you know. It's like everything she ever dreamed of was apples. Now, it was really difficult to find, like, that pristine apple that you see on TV sometimes, you know? Like, uh, you know, if you, if you watch the show Once Upon a Time, you have like this apple that's like pristine. You know, it looks like you could just eat it right there. And usually those aren't made of apple. They're usually like, you know, some kind of other, like plastic or something like that. It's just for show, you know? But, but uh, Aurora, she wanted that badass apple, right? And so, she was looking everywhere she could, trying to find this apple. Well, anyway, she was baking a pie for her neighbor that one day, SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants. You may know him. And uh, and she baked it, and it was actually like a teeny pie because you know SpongeBob is actually a sponge. And he lives in the sea, but today he was actually uh, he was actually in his uh, vacation house. That's her neighbor. Um, and his vacation house is more of a uh, aquarium, almost. So you've seen him before. He's been there. He's been there in the episodes. So anyway, she was making making a cake for SpongeBob SquarePants, and she was like, "All right, you know, I gotta get some extra um, sugar, you know." So she went to the store and got this extra sugar. And while she was there, she decided to look for milk, right? And they're on all different kinds of milk. They had like goat milk, they had like regular milk, they had coconut milk, they had um, raisin milk, they had dog milk, they had um, the, the hundred dollar man milk, and they had like um, some other milk. And, and next thing you know, like she's so confused because there's so many different milks. So she's like, gosh, what should I get? Should I get horchata? Should I get... Uh, chocolate milk, should I get strawberry milk, banana milk, uh, should I get um, x-ray milk, should I get like like um, uh, pajama milk, and should I get like, uh, you know, some 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 jam milk, some tuna milk, there's there's just whale milk, there's like uh, orange milk, and she ended up choosing orange milk, because that's amazing, awesome, awesome, um, really, really good. Um, I usually get it from Kroger. That's, that's, that, that's how it is. They're usually sold out, so. so take that, Kroger. Like, stock more orange milk, man. Um, so, yeah, anyway, she, she chose orange milk. She got some regular milk, too, just for fun, you know. Like, uh, she, I think she got 2%. You know, that's kind of the, the thing. Nobody drinks 1% milk. Everybody's like, 2%, you know. There's, there's probably, like, 50% milk somewhere, you know, half and half or something. I don't know. But the mostly people mostly people drink two percent or whole, you know, depending on what what they're doing. Anyway, she got the two percent, and then she got the orange milk, and she's like, "All right, all right, let's go, let's go." Just she's leaving the store, and next thing you know, she she uh, she she stubs her toe on the ground, and she needs a band aid, so she has to go back into the grocery store. Have you ever been there? But she has milk there, so she doesn't want to let it expire, right? So what do you think she does? Exactly. She takes the milk ends with her. 
because it's cool inside, it's hot outside. Mm-hmm. And so she goes in, and she gets the, uh, she gets the, um, band-aids, and she goes to ring out, and they go, you didn't pay for that milk, right? And, of course, nobody who keeps a receipt, you just, like, trash that crap immediately. So, obviously, she's like, no, 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 I just paid for it, you can check the cameras, and they're so lazy, and I gotta check the cameras. Like, no, 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 we don't check cameras here, man. Like, you're going down. You're going downtown. And so, they slap the cuffs on her. And she, next, and then she was in the jail. And when she was in the jail, one of the, one of the police officers came up and was like, Heh, 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 I know that you didn't steal that milk. Because I saw the video footage that they did. We're too lazy to pull. But you're in this prison now. <laughs> and she's like, wow, that's really rude of you. Why would you do that? I'm just trying to bake an apple pie for SpongeBob. He's like, wait, you know SpongeBob SquarePants? Oh, God. You know, everybody always always talks to her about SpongeBob SquarePants because his TV show is so popular. And so... And she's like, yes. He's like, oh, can you give me his autograph? I can let you out of jail right now. And she's like, I guess, I guess, I guess. So he's like, all right, all right, all right. So let me put in the good word with the uh, with the with the prison board. And next thing you know, she's out of prison, and she gets she 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 goes over to Sponge SpongeBob's house after she bakes the the her apple pie, and uh, her milk's obviously. Actually, she had to go back to the store because her milk obviously expired. They didn't get it in the fridge in time, and well, I, they really probably just returned it back to the back to their own grocery store because they're just greedy. You know, it's a corporation, and like it wasn't like a local grocery store; it was like a corporation grocery store. So then, the uh, so so she so she's like okay, so she baked the pie, and she brought it over to to SpongeBob. And SpongeBob's like, oh my god, thank you so much, hi, this is great. And she's like, hey, can I get an autograph for this cop? And I, he put me in prison. He put you in prison? Oh no! So she's like, all right, you know, so she, he gets her, he gets her uh, the autograph, and and then she goes and she, she goes to give it to him, and he says, hey, uh, uh while you're at it, I, I have this apple, and uh. Yeah, why, why don't you, uh, why don't you, uh, take a bite? And she's like, oh, is that the pristine apple that I've been looking for? And it is. And so she takes a bite, and all of a sudden, she's asleep. And she won't wake up. And the guard's like, ha, 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 shouldn't have trusted me. I mean, I'm the guy that put you in prison. <laughs> right? And, I mean, what's terrible about the story is really just... You gotta be really, really super careful about who you take stuff from, um, because if it's not somebody, if it's not sealed, if it's not like, it, you know, it could be anything. And so, well, the uh, so SpongeBob SquarePants kind of got wind of this, you know, because she he knew she where she was going. She's been missing for like three days, and you know, so so he's like, he he has to put on his put it put on his detective pants. And their circle, so you know that's pretty rare to see him in that. I mean, you know, it's pretty weird. But he has to like really carve himself into him, you know, and then sponge them, punch, sponge himself back together. So it's it's not easy by any means. But um, but he ended up he 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 went down to the police station, talked to that policeman, and was like, hey, where's she at? Where is she? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just a policeman in the prison. And uh, SpongeBob's like, tell me where she is. I have a certain set of skills that I can utilize. And then all of a sudden, he's like, super swole. He's like, bulks up like a beast. He's like pumping 100, 100 pound irons with each hand and he's like oh no I better I better I better cough up the the answer and he says well she's in the forest right and he goes that's exactly right in a glass coffin why did you put it in a glass coffin well you know it's it's, it's my thing I like it I like glass coffins so that's my thing and Spongebob is like what the hell like 
really, really weird, but I'm not gonna, you know. All right, I just gotta get out of here. So SpongeBob runs into the forest and tries to find this glass coffin. Now, glass coffins, you know, they're kind of tough to find because A, they're clear, and B, you know, they're in a forest. So, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, ambiguity going on so I mean and which part of the forest you know he didn't really say so Spongebob's looking around this forest and the problem is that Spongebob is a sponge so he can't dry up in that forest you know so he he had to go home he had to go home for sure a little bit and he he went home and he called Sandy Sandy Cheeks because Sandy can go out in the forest and uh, so she's like okay okay I'll go out there and I'll check it out. And so Sandy Cheeks goes out there and she she searches and searches and she finds something, but it's not a glass coffin. It's actually a um, a, a, a hatchet out there. And it's like a bloody hatchet too. So she's like, eh, you know, something might have happened out here. And she actually, she didn't find anything else out there, but she kept, kept digging and uh, the hatchet was pretty scary, you know, because I mean, who was out there in the woods with this bloody hatchet? So maybe it was like some kind of, you know, murder weapon or something. So, so Sandy Cheeks kept it, hung on to it, and as she as she traveled, and then um, there was like this spaghetti monster, and the spaghetti monster, um, the spaghetti monster was pretty crazy. He was like, Wah! and he like splash tons of spaghetti sauce on her. And uh, he was like, and so Sandy, so and the spaghetti monster was like, ah, ha, 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 ha. and Sandy was like, no, why would you do it? That sucks. So the spaghetti monster, she ran away from the spaghetti monster. Thank goodness. And the next thing you know, she runs into a uh, a police officer out there. They're probably burying somebody else in a freaking glass coffin, you know. Anyway, she followed this police officer, and. He turned around and he saw her with the bloody hatchet and spaghetti sauce all over herself. And she, he was thinking, oh no, murderer, murderer. And he pulled his gun and he said, no, 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 you stay back, you stay back. And she's like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're a murderer. And she's like, no, I've never murdered anybody, but you know, thanks for asking. And, uh, and he was like, yeah, no, no, the evidence is everywhere. Evidence is all over, evidence is all over you. And uh, good thing though, like this coconut fell out of the tree and hit him in the head, and bloop, and he fell over. And thank goodness, because I mean, she could have been shot. You know, and this police officer could have could have just opened fire. You know, you never know. And Sandy wasn't really being very cooperative, so that's fair. That's fair enough as well. well it was false pretense, though. I mean, what she was she being arrested for? You know, having a murder weapon. I mean, who's murder? You know, you gotta have the body first. But anyway, then. The police officer right behind us, he fell right behind him was the glass coffin. So he must have been in on it. So she tied him up and then put him in the, put him in the tree. And she called her witch friends and said, Hey, uh, I got some, I got some, uh, I got some, uh, uh, I got this guy over here. He, he like, he's, he must be in on this. And uh, she, they're like, ah, ha, 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 thank you. And, uh, uh, you know, so, so they'll, they'll take care of him. They'll take care of him. And so, um, to find out what he knows, you know, find out what he knows, because they have really good, uh, um, uh, decisive skills, you know. Uh, and then, so Sandy Cheeks like, oh, I found her, you know, so she opened up the glass coffin, and it had a little lock on it, but she, she had to bust that, and, you know, she was pretty, she's pretty good at that stuff, though. She has, like, a cock, and she got it real easy with a hatchet, and, uh, so it opened up, and she was like, oh, no, and so good thing, though, cause, like, Sandy Cheeks, she knew it was this alchemist, so she actually carried uh, Sleeping Beauty, which was Aurora, uh, which Sleeping Beauty is stupid, anyway. But anyway, uh, she picked her up and brought her over to her alchemist friend, and her alchemist friend was like this, this, uh, this, um, this rat, and he was like, "Hi, I am the alchemist, Jojo," and she's like, "Oh, Jojo, thank you so much for fixing him, for for, for fixing her." Uh, and, and and getting getting for 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 for, for making the the antidote to the to the sleeping powder, and or sleeping whatever the drug, and uh, and the rat was like ah thanks I'm Jojo, and uh, uh, and 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 so 
then uh, Jojo made the mixture and and uh, gave it to her uh, orally, and then uh, Sleeping Beauty was like, oh, and she was awake again, and uh, she was like, what happened? And they were like, well, there's a big police conspiracy. We've already called the FBI to investigate and try to figure out what's going on, and they'll probably have like a big thorough investigation of the police department on this weird coffin, uh, glass coffin thing going on, and everything's really strange about it. Like, why would you have a glass coffin in the first place? And why would they call Sleeping Beauty Sleeping Beauty? I mean, you know, that's subjective. You know, like, uh, who knows? You know, I mean, she maybe maybe she's beautiful. You know, but like, is that why she was you know uh, attacked? You know, who knows? It's hard to say, but. I will say that everything worked out in the end, and uh, SpongeBob was just fine. He recovered nicely. Uh, he had a very not long uh, a bath in his tank, and it, you know, it, it's really just a warning. Uh, it's mostly a warning to make sure that you don't take anything like any drinks or or food or or anything like that that isn't prepackaged, wrapped up. Like, make sure you have a buddy system, you know, if she had been uh, at the police station with Sandy, um, or, or, or with Spongebob, maybe, I mean, maybe if he could make the trip, uh, but, but if she had had somebody there, then he wouldn't have been able to do that and stick her in a glass coffin, um, so always have a buddy system, and just be very, very safe out there, alright?